Did you come this morning to hear me preach or did you come to hear God say something? Thank you. He changed around some stuff this morning. And it happened when I saw the cross. Palm Sunday, people are so excited. Jesus is, he's got to go in Jerusalem. Every sacrifice had to be inspected four days. In the Jewish law, before an animal could be accepted, there had to be, I, thank you for shaking your head. You understand what I'm saying. Thank you, brother. But they had to be inspected to make sure that they were perfect so they could be a sacrifice. You got that? That's why Jesus went into Jerusalem the week before. Palm Sunday, they, they put the palms out. They were hollering, hallelujah. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And for 30 years before that, Jesus began his healing ministry. We know in Canaan, the wedding where he turned water into wine. People started loving on Jesus. And this, this is what the Lord showed me. When all of that is happening, he knew the cross was behind him. For 30 years as he ministered, or the three and a half years really, every time he, he, he fed 5,000 one time and he fed 4,000 another time, and they're saying that was just men, so if there were children and wives there, that could have been a total of 50,000 people. But he knew the cross was behind him. The cross looks pretty. But that cross looks pretty for us today. It did not look pretty a week from now, Palm Sunday. If you ever look up what crucifixion meant, it was ugly. It was a tree. It was a, 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 a twisted tree that they put up there. It wasn't a pretty cross like that. It was a crusted it was terrible. We were able to go there to Jerusalem and see it. But everything that Jesus did, the cross, <laughs> he turned around and he looked at the cross. Now, I believe that there were two instances when Jesus really had an opportunity. Once was in the garden. Lord, if it be thy will. He said, this, thing, this hand that I'm holding, it's really too hard to hold. Is there another deal? You know, in cards, can, it, can you give me another deal? But not my will be done, thy will be done. And then when Jesus is on the cross, he's been beaten, scourged, stripped. They, uh, a whip of cattails, they called it. With, with sharp stones in them wrapped around his body, they filleted his body. And they stood there and they said, okay, Bubba, if you are the king of the Jews, come down. And Jesus could have talked to daddy and said, Papa, this would be a good time. But the Bible says, but for the joy of that was set before him. I don't know why I'm getting so emotional. That I think about all that he did for us. And not for us that are in church. There's a lot of people not in church today. You know, he, he was going to go to that cross no matter what. And I'm just thinking, you know, when I've had a week and I've sinned, and I've had to ask Jesus to forgive me, you know, several times. He still went to that cross. His blood had to be shed. There was no way out. He had 
that had to happen. It had been prophesied. It was the fulfillment of prophecy that was going to happen no matter what. If you've been with us for any length of time, I always, growing up, my parent, growth my grandparents, one lived in Commerce and one lived in Colorado City. I loved going to Colorado City. I loved going there. I did not like going to Commerce. I'm sorry if you're from Commerce. <laughs> I'm sure it's a beautiful town, but when, I, when you're a teenager or young, there were no young, they were all 85 years old. There were no young people in Commerce, Texas. And I hated to go there, but I knew in order to get to Colorado City, I had to go through Commerce. There was no, can we just go straight to Colorado City? No, we got to go visit Colorado City. 5,000 served, 4,000 served. 50,000 people probably applauding and clapping and saying, wow, how, how great you are. It never erased the cross. And so here, we're, we're celebrating Palm Sunday. They're, 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 hallelujah. Here he comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Here comes Jesus. Yay! And he says, they took off their cloaks and laid them down. They cut off palm branches and they laid them down so he could come into the city. met with his disciples. All of a sudden, the 50,000 people that he fed one time, there's no one around. And the closer he gets to that time, even the disciples start leaving him. But he always knew the cross was right there. Because of what was going to be a... It takes a loving God to die for our sins. You'd think he'd want to die for good folk. For God so loved the world. All the garbage that's going on in the world today that crosses for them. And again, it looks pretty to us because we're saved. And our sins are forgiven because he paid the price for that. So what we're doing now is we're trying to get other people to recognize that cross is for them. For a revelation that that Jesus that everybody's heard about, talked about, he went there despite how we're living. Wow. I don't know why I get so emotional thinking about that. Because when we, now, we, we're blessed because he, he's provided, he's an advocate. He stands in the way of us. You know, the Bible says because of that cross that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Now, if you're, it took me a little while to get that. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, me, Jack Pigeon. I've gone back to reunions at my hometown. I graduated from high school over 60 years ago, and people will say, what are you doing? I say, well, I'm a pastor, and they're going, you're kidding. <laughs> you're kidding. But God's a miracle-working God. <laughs> Amen. But this week... Everybody, everybody started dropping off as the closer Jesus got to the cross. Even Peter. I'll never, never. He said, Peter, three times. You're going to deny me. And you know, the last denial, the Bible even makes it sound like he cursed Jesus. But you know what? When Jesus rose from the, that, tone, that stone was rolled away and he talks to the, the women and he said, go tell, this is good, this is good, this is good. Everybody say, this is good. This is good. So Peter has denied him, cursed his name. He's risen from the grave and he tells the, the, the women, okay, I want you to go into Galilee and I want you to tell the disciples and Peter, I am 
Peter. Golly. We're, we're, we're so grateful that our sins yes. are forgiven. Yes. As far as the east is from the west. The Bible says never to be remembered again. And someone said, well, does that give me, I can just go on sinning then if he forgives me. Well, it says, with the heart, do you know you're forgiven? Do you know you're forgiven? Do you know that you are forgiven? Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry, that just, that just seeing that cross is just, I just got emotional. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Nothing was going to stop him, not the blessings, not the crowds that were for him, nor the crowds that were against him. As he's hanging on that cross and that centurion soldier and the two thieves on either side, the Bible said they railed him. Hey, if you're who you say you are, get down and bring us with you. And Jesus' words were, Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Amen. Well, only a loving God could do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, that's number one. I just felt like I had to do that. We're celebrating Palm Sunday, a triumphant entry to that cross. Now, the people around him, they didn't know what the end result was. He knew he's going to be beaten, cursed at, neglected, and all the crowds that followed him for three years, there's just a few women at the end. But he still did it for me and for you Amen. and for you. I don't care where you are in life. Jesus died for your sins. Amen. I don't care how rotten you think you are or your relatives think you are, or your wife or husband thinks you are. It really doesn't matter. What does God say about you? What does he say about me? He said, your sins are forgiven. They're washed away, never to be remembered See, certain people remember our sins. I remind one every once in a while, Jesus forgot that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a hand clap. Let, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's yours. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 2 Timothy 3.16. Who's serious this morning about coming to church? Amen. Come on now. We don't just come to church because it's a good time to fellowship and get out of, have something to do on Sunday morning. This is a serious time because we're going to be talking about the Word of God. 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is advantageous. It's approved of God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for four reasons. He's going to tell me what's not right. He's going to tell me what's right. He's going to tell me how to get right. And then he's going to tell me how to stay right. The Word of God. Everything that Jesus or God ever did was perfect. Is there, we got to get a picture of that. Everything God did was perfect. Now, what Satan came to do was distort 
in the garden. Sin came into being. And so everything in the universe, everything in the world, sin came into the world. Does everybody understand that? The only thing that Satan could not change was the Word of God. And the devil knew it. So what's the first thing the devil comes to change? Did God really say that? Our sister Pansy's having some medical. She's going to have an operation. Pansy is saying, the word says that by his stripes I am healed. Amen. The Bible says you lay hands on the sick and they will, not maybe, not sometimes, they shall recover. Amen. Pansy's confession is by his stripes I am healed. Amen. But the world says, but Pansy, these doctors went to college. These doctors know what they're doing and praise God for doctors. But we can either believe what the Word of God says because it's truth and not like the devil did God really say that. He's trying to get us to question, well, did you hear from God? Well, yeah, I read His Word. And His Word said He sent His Word and healed them. Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within, bless His holy name, who forgives all of my sins and heals all of my diseases. Amen. So if we, so if I believe that I'm saved, then I'm healed. If I believe that I'm healed, then I'm saved. Amen? Because no, he wants to change the Word of God. But it says all Scripture is given by inspiration. People say, well, yeah, but men wrote the Bible. Well, goofy, you had to use somebody. <laughs> there are certain Scriptures in here that you'll, you'll read a commentary and it'll say, well, that wasn't added in the first or second, that, that was added later. I don't care when it was added. If God placed every star in the sky exactly where he wanted it, if he made the moon to be where it's supposed to be, if he put Mars where it's supposed to be, if he put the, the uh, uh, earth and, and then threw them up in the air and had them rotate, then I believe that he would take care of his word. So all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. John 10, 10 says, The thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus said, I am come that you might have life, and life more abundantly. What I really want to talk about this morning, how do we achieve that life? Not just because Jesus said so, but how, how do we achieve that life? Amen? Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I call heaven and earth to record this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, choose life. So I would, I would venture to say I've chosen life. How many, how many other have chosen life? How many have chosen healing over, over sickness and disease? I've done that. Amen. Proverbs 18:21. Here's, here's, here's how we walk in that abundant life. Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. And they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Amen. I'm 14 years old. Not, not now. I'm 14 years old in a biology class in my high school. And Coach Vestal, who was the coach and the teacher at the time, comes in and he tells us that there were only 47 in my whole high school. So there may have been 20 of us. But he said, get out a pencil and a piece of paper and I want you to write, write this down. So, you know, we're ready. Well, I'm 14. Everybody say he's 14. I just want you to know 
where I am at 14. And he makes this statement. He said, I want y'all to write down the dirtiest part of your body. Now, what do you think a bunch of 14-year-olds are going to write down? <laughs> I never will forget this. But what we wrote down was not the right answer. Your mouth. Physically, hygienally, the worst part of our body is our mouth. What we put in it, what we touch it with, and so forth. Amen? So even in the physical world, we need to take care of our mouth. Amen? I, uh, Mark 16, we, we had a great baptism, what, a couple of weeks ago? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Is everybody... Is that, is that from the word? He that believeth and is baptized. And then it lists five signs that follow a believer. I want to talk about one of those signs this morning. They will speak with new tongues. Okay? There's four other signs, but this morning I want to talk about they will speak with new tongues. As a young Christian... When I heard that, it meant to me, Jack, you got to quit cussing. Come on. You will speak with new tongues. Well, if I've got a new tongue, then I'm going to have to quit cussing. No more Jesus or GD or all those other words that we were to say. And that's been, that's been 50 years ago. It changed my mouth. In other words, the Bible says sweet and sour can't come out of the same vessel. Amen. How many, how many, when you got born again, your mouth changed? Okay, put it down. How many are still working on it? <laughs> ah! <laughs> well, of course we are. <laughs> but, but, but we, to the best of my ability, I quit cussing. Amen? So that was the first thing when I found out you'll speak with new tongues. Then I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I started speaking in tongues. I started speaking to God. Because the Bible says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue doesn't speak to man, he's speaking to God. That's kind of awesome. When you think that when you sit down in the morning, my time's in the morning when I sit down and I pray about a situation. And then I say, I'm talking to God. What are you saying, Jack? Don't have a clue. Come on now. I'm speaking God's language. Because I'm not speaking. And man say, that's foolishness. Okay. Putting a bunch of animals on a boat. That sounded foolishness too, but he did it. Are you understand what I'm saying? So I, I tried to quit cussing. Because, see, I want this life. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. He went to that cross so we could have life, good life, abundant life, healthy life. I want that. But my enemy is my mouth. Mary Jean and I, years ago, we went to Casey Treat. Does anybody ever remember Casey Treat? I hadn't heard from him in a long time. But anyway, we went to a meeting, and he was there. And man, we're all excited to sit there. We've got our Bibles and everything. And this is the first thing out of his mouth. Every problem in your church is you. <laughs> and every answer is you. Talking to pastors. You're the problem and you're the answer. I never will forget that. Poor Casey. Anyway. Anyway, so... I, I'm going to wash my mouth, cursing and stuff like that, baptized in the Holy Ghost. But the third, the third, speak with new tongues, as, as Pastor Michelle said. We are a faith church. We confess what we possess. Amen. We speak faith words. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
See, those are, those, that, that's, a, that's a new tongue that, that we've learned, that we've learned in our daily walk with the Lord. By His stripes, our tomorrow is based on what we talk about today. Amen. What happens tomorrow is what we're talking about today. Amen. Whatever you want for tomorrow, talk about it today. Amen. Lord, I believe that all of my needs are met according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I believe, Lord. I don't know how you're going to do it. I got rent. I got car payment. I got telephone payment. I got all these payments. But see, because I'm a giver, I'm, I'm walking in life. And my God said, give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken, running over. <laughs> shall men give into your bosom? Well, thank you, Lord. What am I worried about? My confession. Mm. When we start confessing, I don't, I don't have enough money. When we start confessing, I'll never make that payment. That's in our future. Are you understanding that? I just spoke it. I said, I'll never have that. Here's my future. Well, what, what, what's wrong? I spoke it. But my words are, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mark 11 tells me, and Mary Jean said it, speak to your mountain. Yes. And what we do, folks, is we speak about our mountain. He said, speak to your mountain and tell it. Speak to it. Be picked up and removed and cast into the sea. And doubt not in your heart, but believeth that those things, Jackie, that you sayeth out of your mouth shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Because when Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, he opened the door to his word to where we can speak faith-filled words. Are you catching that? That's, that's part of our heritage. I can lay hands on the sick I can lay hands on the sick and they recover. We're, learn we're learning stuff. Amen? Amen? We're never through learning. Amen. Early in our walk with the Lord, we had a couple uh, in the church, great couple, and uh, we're, we're kind of new at that church and everything. I get a call from one of the big guys in the church and he, he had a friend that was paralyzed and had been in the bed. And he called me to go pray for him, to go with him and we're going to go pray for him. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness gracious. So I get my little, my little oil, my little thing of oil and we're going to go pray for this guy. We're driving. He says, what do you think we ought to do? I said, I'm not in charge, you're in charge. He said, what do you think we ought to do? I said, well, I've, I've got my oil, and we'll, we'll lay hands on him and, and pray healing. Oh, we can't do that. That puts too much pressure on him. Let's just, uh, they were both big Aggie football players. He said, let's just tell him a couple of Aggie jokes and comfort him. So I took my oil and put it back in my pocket. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know that the power of God came into that room to heal him, and I didn't do it. We, we spoke no life over him. Life was in our mouth for that young man. Even though it looked impossible, he had, he had been in, that, in the bed for years. But that's, I've asked God to forgive me, folks. We had an opportunity to walk into the devil's camp and kill him by speaking God's word. 
But we did, he, what did he say? Oh, we don't want to embarrass him. If you ever come to pray for me, I don't need your comfort. I want you to tell the devil to take a hike. Amen. That's what people want from us. They don't want comfort. Everybody, well, they, we just want to comfort him. We just want to be there and be your friend. I don't need a friend. Herb, I need Jesus. Amen? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And what I speak about, I walk in. I like what Jerita says all the time. I'm highly favored of God. I'm blessed and highly favored of God. You know, she really believes that. And she is. She's highly favored of God. She, we confess it. Thank you, Lord. That cross is all about Jesus fulfilling life for us. And he did it. And on Sunday, we're going we're to celebrate up from the grave he arose. Amen. Triumphant. Amen. Triumphant. Amen. Three days later, the stone has been rolled yes, away. Amen. And I've already said this. I don't care where you are in life, if you've known Jesus, but you feel like you've been away from him, he said, go tell my disciples and your name. When I, when I first read that, I said, oh my gosh, that's me. Because we would think that we've, we've been away, that we've really not acted like we should be acting. Even in that stage, folks, Jesus said, go tell my church and whoever that is. We serve an awesome God. I just, this morning just, uh, he didn't stop. He got on that donkey. He rode in Jerusalem and they're just applauding him and hollering, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he's looking at that cross. He knew it was in his future for our future. Yes, Amen. Stand to your feet with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Watch your mouth this week. Watch your confessing. You possess what you confess. Everybody say this. I possess, I possess what, I confess. what I confess. If you're talking good about your tomorrow, your tomorrow is going to be good. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, just say two things while we're finishing today. Uh, our harvesters have gotten tickets to go to a uh, quartet. The, uh, what's their names? What's a quartet? Anyway, it's a great Christian quartet. They've come every year, and we, our harvesters go to it. And we have some tickets, and we, I think the tickets are $25, but we bought them early, so they're $15. Diane, $15. If you would like to go, you don't have to be a harvester, but if you like gospel quartet singing, I'm going to ask you to see Miss Diane. Do you have the tickets? Okay. She has the tickets, and she, she's going to be standing back at the information booth uh, back there. If you would like to go, uh, uh, $15 a ticket, two for 30 Amen? It's uh, April 6th, Saturday April 6th, 4 o'clock in the afternoon? 4 o'clock in the afternoon. I, we've been before, and if you like quartet singing, they're really good. They're really good. Also, harvesters. We're going to start a new Sunday school class uh, the first Sunday after Easter. So in two Sundays at 9 o'clock, the harvesters, 55 and older, Pastor Jack likes to say 60 and over, because he's 58. Or will be. But it's any, if you're close to 55, we're going to ask you to be part of a Sunday school class that we're starting at 9 o'clock. And I, I believe the first Sunday we're going to have food, but you need to come a little early to get some food. So that's in two weeks, two Sundays, the harvesters, Mary Jean and I, we prayed about it. 
and uh, we're going to deal with uh, uh, spiritual issues, physical issues, uh, about just growing old. <laughs> but, uh, but, but we're still vital. We're still, we're still vital, right, Jackie? We're still vital. So if you'd like to come and learn about that, invite some friends that would like to come. That's going to be in uh, two weeks. That's Sunday morning. You, we'll be sending out a deal. But we would like for you to sign up. Uh, some of our ladies are going to be back there. If you would like to say, because we're going we're to provide some food. So you want to go back? Is someone back there already? Okay, Miss Pansy's going. She can't talk. But she'll be back there. Amen. So if you're 55 and up and, and would like to come and hear the word, what does the word of God say about us? Us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I know Pastor Jack, uh, is, uh, he's loving on some friends of his at another church. But I'm sure he would say he, he misses you and he'll look forward to being here for Sunday. Uh, next Sunday, of course, is Resurrection Sunday. It's going to be a beautiful day. Pastor's been praying and seeking the Lord. But uh, I'm so glad Jesus set me free. Amen. He went to that cross. He could have stepped down, but he said, nope. He made a way where there seems to be no way. Walking on the water. For us. It was always in his future. It was always in his future. But you know, he never talked about it. He talked about the glory that was set before him. And that was you and I. I'm going to do it for them. But Lord, they don't love you like I do. I'm going to do it for them. Jesus made this statement. I didn't come for the healthy people. I came for the sick folk. You know, the Pharisees got mad at him because he's hanging around a bunch of uh, uh, tax collectors. And they said, why are you doing that? Why are you hanging around sinners? That's who I came for. Thank you, Lord. Father, we praise you. We thank you for today, Lord. Somehow, some way, Lord, we heard it. Somehow, some way, we confessed with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we believe, Lord, that you raised him from the dead and he now sits at the right hand of God forever making intercession for you and I. When you think no one's praying for you, just remember that scripture. Jesus said, I'm praying for you. I'm standing in the gap. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we praise you for today. Lord, we just uh, thank you for this next week. I'm just going to confess, Lord, that this next week is going to be one of the greatest weeks that we've ever had. I just, I just pray that over this coming week, Lord. I'm going to confess that no weapon formed against us can prosper. No evil, no plague can not come nigh our dwelling place. I confess that and prophesy that right now, Lord. I prophesy that everything that I put my hands to this next week is going to prosper for the kingdom of God. I confess that, Lord. And I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You want to say something? Mary Jean wants to say something. <laughs> Don't call the cat if you want the dog. <laughs> oh, that, that's really spiritual. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> Don't call the cat when you want the dog. <laughs> Amen. God bless everyone. Hey, see you next week. <laughs> Bring a friend. Bring a friend.